Hello, ladies. No ladies watch this channel. Hello, men. Today's video is going to have two topics. The first topic is I'm in far over my head when it comes to purchasing the ThinkPads and trying to resell them. I have a growing pains problem. The second part of the video is going to be about does thermal paste actually make a difference? Does changing the thermal paste actually work? Is it worth it? Does it lower the temps? Does it increase performance? What's the benefit of it? And we're going to jump right into it by having myself explain the story of how we got here. I went to Tampa to meet a supplier because I have a supply issue with my ThinkPads. Uh, as you have seen from the videos, I'm now selling ThinkPads on the website and I sold all 77 of those ThinkPads that I had previously listed. I sold in like, what, it was like 50 minutes or something like that. It was something ridiculous. I was not expecting that much demand, but I went to Tampa to try to figure out if I can get a supplier that will be able to meet the demand that I have right now. And it didn't work out. They could not meet the demand, but that's the nature of the business. So right now that's my problem. I have a supply problem. If you know how to help me with my supply problem, then please let me know at purchasing at Salem Tech experts.com and it doesn't just have to be ThinkPads, it can be anything. It can be latitudes, elite books, maybe precisions. Precisions are nice. I just need to be able to buy these laptops in good condition in bulk so I can refurbish them and sell them to you guys for dirt cheap because my goal is to put reliable cheap laptops in the hands of people that would have otherwise bought crappy consumer laptops that will break in a year because if I can't fix your unrepairable laptop at least I can prevent that from happening in the first place by selling you one that's not gonna break, or if it does break, it'll be easy to repair and cheap to repair. But today, what we're doing is we are upgrading these uh, T14s, 512 gigabyte NVMEs and all these. This one's ready to go. So these all need to be repasted, uh, dusted off. There's a lot of gooch stuck in, uh, I shouldn't say a lot of gooch. It's, it's minimal levels of gooch compared to gaming laptops, you freaks. Speaking of upgrades, I like the glasses. You like these? Yeah, uh -huh. they're pretty uh, pretty sleek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are, uh, these are Z Lules. Shout out to Zlul. I needed to make my eyeballs run as efficiently as possible. And as you've seen in my past videos, I wear glasses while driving. But wearing glasses while driving was not solving my issue. I thought my eyes were tired because I didn't have my uh, glasses on all day, but it was because I was looking at a monitor all day and that blue light was killing me. So I got these bad mamma jammas and they have blue light filters in them. But yeah, no, I like these. I think they're, uh, they're pretty stylish. Um, I got you a pair as well. Here they are. Ah, all right, how do I look? I think you look gorgeous. Ever since wearing z to block blue light, I don't have eye strain when I'm leaving work after staring at screens for 8 hours straight. In fact, I didn't even realize just how bad blue light was until I started blocking it out. I thought it was just regular stress from working on laptops with the brightness cranked up, but it's not. Long-term exposure to blue light, whether it's from repairing a laptop or binging a video game, is known to have negative effects on your health, specifically with your sleep. The best way to combat this is with a blue light blocker, which is where z comes in. Because preventing your precious balls of vision from harmful rays means less eye strain, less stress, and more sleep. And though the technology to create lenses that do this may be complicated, ordering them is simple. Just go on their website, find a pair you like, which is easy considering all the stylish frames they have, enter in your prescription, and boom! Your eyeball protectors arrive in no time at all, so you can jump right into seeing a clear, more comfortable world free of blue light and poor quality. All without breaking the bank. So do your beautiful globes of vision a favor and check out Zlul using the link in my description. So thank you Zlul for these uh, fresh specs. So right now what we're doing is we're doing a master image uh, on one laptop. So we're taking one laptop, I think this is it right here, that one's good to go. And we are just cloning them with our test bench that is highly sophisticated. And by highly sophisticated, I mean we have a single PCIe card with a zip tie, shout out to Lupe, yes. and some Velcro with sub crumbs stuck in them. So what we did is we bought a quad NVMe to PCIe adapter. So we bought three of them so we can clone 12 drives at once using CloneZilla. But that's super inefficient as you guys in the deployment industry know. Like those of you that have MSPs or work for MSPs and you image hundreds of laptops at the same time, you know how inefficient that is. So where's my middle ground? I need you guys to help me on that one. I'm having growing pains here. Where is the middle ground for that? I'm making it work, but it's costing me so much time at the expense of the channel. As you've seen, like my content has plummeted. I don't think the quality has plummeted, but I haven't been able to push out as much content as I want, especially with the short form stuff. So I, I kind of just need help on that. The other thing that we're doing is I bought a bunch of T470 S's 
and those are going to be international sales. I heard you guys, you guys were all complaining that I'm not shipping to your country, so I'm gonna ship to your country, but I'm gonna use eBay for that. I'm not gonna use Shopify. With that said, every single one of these laptops needs new paste, and that's what we're gonna be doing. These are super easy. I guess this can, this can, here, I'm gonna get close to you, Lupe. No. <laughs> All of these laptops need need pacing. This one's probably the worst one that we have so far. These are very easy to work on. You can see the thermal paste. A lot of refurbishers don't ever change the thermal paste. So for these guys, you remove the four screws and you cut the tape there. There's a little tape right here and you have to actually twist it that way because see how it's tucked underneath the heatsink a little? So if you just try to pull it up, you'll bend the heatsink. So you have to, you have to twist it off. Uh, this one's not too bad, actually. The fan's a little Gucci, as is to be expected. Generally speaking, the Lenovo ThinkPads have a really good dust-resistant vent design, and this is one of them. A little ball of gooch. That's all. Not too bad, especially compared to gaming laptops. They also don't, the fan doesn't spin as hard as gaming laptops, too, so that's another reason it's, it's uh, not, as, uh, not as bad. Uh, I just need a toothbrush. Boot based toothbrush. I'm gonna go in the trash where I belong. And that's it. Beautiful, right? Magnifical. Fans are back in, and look at how crusty this is. Look at this. That is crusty dusty, my friend. Look at, that is crusty. Now if you come here close, a lot of people ask about this too. You see how this doesn't have thermal paste on it? So this is the, they don't put thermal paste on that because it can actually increase the temperature of the CPU. So what they say is that this, and I say they, I mean Intel, it doesn't get hot enough to require thermal paste. And putting thermal paste on there can actually raise your temps. But we are gonna put thermal paste on the CPU. And we're gonna use Amec, shout out to Amec. I'm not gonna use PTM on these ones. I do use PTM on the more demanding ThinkPads, like the P-Series and like the workstations. But this is, is almost just as good as PTM. Listen, it's Wu-Tang, legends. Who? Cool. Leave. Get out. <laughs> you think Ghostface watches your content? No, absolutely not. Ghostface didn't even know who I was when, when we met. I didn't know who I was at that time either. I was very uh, inebriated. That was New Year's Eve, man. At the casino. That's two strikes. That was fun. Look at this. I just noticed this. I noticed this because of my z Wow. Yeah, so it, it feels like it's just adhesive, but I'm gonna check. Wow, that's interesting. It connects the Ethernet port to the computer. It has its own little dedicated cable. All right, so there's a little, little schmegma there. I don't know what that is, so I'm gonna try to just clean it off. All right, so the schmegma is gone, but you see a little wear right there? I'm gonna patch it because it doesn't look like any, any actual contacts are exposed. I'm just gonna use some captain tape on there. Just a little piece of captain tape. Thank you. Beautiful, mysterious hand. So we're patched up. Now, if there is any issue with this, you know what's good? These come with a one-year warranty. So if there's any issue, they can just return it. Unless they water damage it. The warranty does not cover you messing up your stuff because you're rough with it or your cat spilled goat milk lotion. Do you remember the goat milk lotion? Oh, we were, from the train. We were yeah. on the Amtrak and they had goat milk lotion. Yes, I remember and it smelled weird. Yeah, that was odd. I turned into Ashy Harry. Ashy Harry <laughs> instead of Ashy Larry. I don't know what I would do without you, Lupe. That's what she said. Did she? All <sighs> the girls say that. Okay. I'm very hot. Well, that was a weird place to respawn. Good thing they have, uh, they have barbers in hell. Huh? Fresh cut. Now, while I was dead in limbo, I saw that there was a video by somebody that said thermal paste does nothing, that thermal paste is snake oil, and that changing thermal paste is a waste of time, it's a waste of money, and that the real reason that the temperatures decline when you do a thermal paste replacement is because you're blowing the dust out of the heatsink and not because the thermal paste has been changed. I don't agree with that. So, to test this, as you can see, all these think pads these are T14 Gen 1s, right? Every single one of these ThinkPads, there is no dust actually stuck in the vents. The vents are completely clean. There's barely any dust in here. Uh, because Lenovo has a good design, even this one, this is the dustiest one of all. There's no actual clog in here. There's just some stray pubes strewn about. So what I'm gonna do, because I'm doing thermal paste on all of these and I wanna justify why I changed the thermal paste on all these laptops before I sell them. So this laptop is completely flat. It's on high performance mode. It is a T14 Gen 1. HW Info is open. As you can see, it's idling. The internet is off. So there's no internet right now. This is it just idling, ADC. I have Cinebench open. I'm gonna start the multi-core test and I'm just gonna open up HW Info. I'm gonna immediately reset it. And we're gonna see what the temperature is. Our score, 3904, 3904. And our average wattage 
Well, you know what? I'm just going to take a screenshot of this wattage. Now we are going to close everything down and I'm going to replace the thermal paste on this. And while I do that, I'm going to show you the condition that the laptop is in just so I can show you that the heat sinks aren't blocked with dust and that any difference in thermals is going to strictly be because of the thermal paste change. As you can see, there is no dust blocking the heat sink. That heat sink is completely clean. Completely clean, no dust. Gentle scrub a dub dub, me and Lupe in a tub. That's our own special video. So a nice even thin layer of thermal paste on there and completely clean heat sink. HW Info and Cinebench R23. Okay, the, the computer's been on for a few minutes, just like the other one. I didn't want to influence the result in any way. And we're gonna start and we're gonna reset just like we did last time. And we wait. 3950 and these screenshot it. Now when we compare it side by side, after a repaste, we got an additional 17% max CPU power, 12% average CPU power, and 17% max IA core power. And though the Cinebench scores were only marginally better, the point is the computer was able to reach its full potential again simply by repasting. And just to drive home this point, I did the same thing on two more T14 ThinkPads, but with i7s instead of i5s, as they use more wattage to achieve a higher performance. Now remember, the CPU will always hit its throttle limit when put under a sudden load, so the max temp generally isn't a concern when under load, which is why the max and average wattage is a better indicator of whether the paste actually made a difference. And as you can see, it made a huge difference in performance because now it's able to pump out more wattage at the same temps. So yes, replacing degraded thermal paste does improve performance and is not snake oil. And that's that. So if you want to grab one of these think pads, well, they're probably already sold out. But sign up here and we'll only email you when there's a new drop. For my international subscribers, follow us on eBay, where we'll be putting some older models up for sale to test the waters. For everyone else, thanks again for watching my videos, because without you, this wouldn't be possible. And a very special thanks to the greatest supporters. I'd be screwed without you all supporting me. And that's all for today. I'll see you in the next one.